So today's our first lesson in, actual, in the actual Algebra 2 book. However, this first lesson is really, um, again, a review of something from Algebra 1. All, most books start out with a review, and this one does too. So this one is talking about solving equations, okay, and it's linear equations. So by linear equations, we're talking about equations where the variable is to the first power, okay? And what you want to do is you want to isolate the variable. Um, we'll talk about the special cases, solutions after. You're going to isolate the variable and you're going to solve. Sometimes, okay, the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation are going to be equal. Okay, and I will talk about that. And when it is, your solutions are all real numbers. In other words, the let's say the variable is x. Any value for x is going to work in that equation. So the solution is basically every solution or infinity. Um, now, the second kind is when you actually go to solve it in the left side and the right side, they don't match. It's impossible. You cannot find a value for x that will make the left and the right side equal each other. And therefore, that's a time when you get a no solution or you write it like that, okay? It's like basically a false statement. And we'll go over that when we see it. So we're looking for here either one solution, no solution, or all real numbers or infinite solutions. Um, so let's start with the first one. So again, our, our goal here is to always isolate the variable. And you isolate the variable by using the inverse properties. So right now, you have 3x minus 6 equals 0. We want to undo everything that is on the, the side where the variable is because ultimately we want the variable by itself. So um, multiplication and division are always kind of attached to the variable, and addition and subtraction is separate away from the variable. So we always start with the addition or the subtraction. So right now, it's subtracting 6 from 3x, so we're going to add 6 to both sides. Notice by adding 6, we undo it, and we start chipping away, and now we just have the 3x together. So this is 3 times x. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide both sides by 3, and by doing that, we get our answer, okay? And again, at the beginning, if you're not comfortable with this, you can always check your answers. You know, 3 times 2 minus 6 has to equal 0. 6 minus 6 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Yep, it worked. So you can always check your work. Um, don't be afraid to check, and especially on exams. Okay, um, we go to the next one. So you know they're going to get progressively, you know, harder. Where you know sometimes they're, some are going to be one step, some are going to be two steps. Sometimes you have variables on both sides, and well, what happens here is you're going to move the variables to one side. So let's say here, I'm going to subtract three x from the right side to eliminate it there, and I'll subtract three x from the left side. So I'm going to get 2x plus 4 equals negative 8. So now I have my variables all on the left. I want to move my numbers to the right, so I'll subtract 4 from here and subtract 4 from there. Remember, whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. That keeps you balanced. 2x equals negative 12. And when I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get that x equals negative 6. And again, if I were to plug negative 6 in here, I would end up getting negative 26 on the left side, and if I was to plug negative 6 in this side, I would also get negative 26, and so I know I did it right. I uh, go to the next one. Again, I have uh, 7 minus x equals 19. I'm going to subtract 7 from the left, subtract 7 from the right. I'm going to get minus x equals 12. And again, I can't, I don't want to know what minus x is. I need to know what x is. So I could just, in essence, either multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. And I'm going to get x equals negative 12. Eventually, when you see that the variable is a negative over here, you can just make it a positive by, by make, switching the signs of what's on the other side. So you don't actually have to do the division or the multiplication if you don't want to. You just kind of know. Um, so then we keep going. Again here, 7x plus 2 is 23. I'm going to subtract 2 first. Remember, always do addition and subtraction first. That's going to leave you with 7x equals 21. And then you divide by 7, and that's going to leave you with x equals 3. Um, again, 5, you have variables on both sides, so I'll add 2x to both sides. I'm going to get 7x plus 3 equals 6. I'll subtract 3 from both sides. 
and I get 7x equals 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 7, and I get x equals 3 sevenths. No one said every answer had to be an integer. No one said every answer has to be, you know, a whole number. It could be um, a fraction. It can be a decimal. It can be zero. You know, your answers can be different. And then I'll do the last one. Again, um, I'm going to leave the minus 2x on this side. I'll subtract 7 from both sides. I'm going to get minus 2x equals 8. I'm going to divide by minus 2. And I'm going to get that x equals minus 4. So notice that all of these were, none of these were special solutions. These were all a single solution for our variable. Now here we might, at some point we're going to get to special solutions. I'm not sure if this is it. Let's see. So again, we come here and we do minus 5x minus 5x. And we get 2x minus 9 equals 7. I'll add 9 to both sides. 2x equals 16 and so 2x equals 16 I'll divide both sides by 2 and I get that x equals 8 so again no special solutions here um, now notice in number 8 you have 6 times x minus 1 plus 4 equals 3 times 7x minus 1 and so here you have a lot of steps this is a multi-step problem first thing you're gonna have to do is distribute these things here okay so you're gonna have to kind of take your time Let's distribute the 6. We get 6x minus 6 plus 4 equals, and let's distribute the 3. So 21x plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify the left side by combining these two like terms. And the right side is kind of fully simplified. Everything's already combined. So now that I have it down to 6x minus 2 equals 21x plus 3, I'm ready to kind of get my numbers. Now I like putting my uh, variables um, on the left. That's just me. Um, some of my students would, would cringe with this, and I'll tell you why. So I, here I got minus 15x minus 2 equals 3. So now I'm going to got minus 15x minus 2 equals 3. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And I'm going to get minus 15x equals 5. And then I divide by minus 15. And so I get here x equals 5 over minus 15 or minus 1 third. And I got my answer. So some of you guys, when as soon as I pulled this negative over here, um, you know, and I made this x negative on the left, it probably stressed some of you out. Some of you try to avoid that. Um, what some of you might have done, and I totally understand, is when you got to this step here, you might have done it in a different order. So again, you would have done 6x minus 2 equals 21x plus 3. I have students that like to keep the x's positive, so they might have done minus 6x. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. They would get minus 2 equals 15x plus 3, and then they would subtract 3 from both sides. So if they had done that, they would have gotten minus 5 equals 15x. Again, you're going to solve by dividing by 15, and notice that you still get x is negative 1 third. So the order doesn't really matter whether you move the variables to the left or whether you move the variables to the right. Uh, in the end, if you do the math correctly, you do the same thing to both sides and you're very, care very careful with your positives and negatives, you're going to end up with the same exact answer. So, um, you know, do it however you need to do it. Let me kind of erase this out of the way a little bit. All right, so then we're going to get to this last problem here. And um, again, we have to distribute the 4 to start. So 4x plus 8 minus 12 equals, and then we'll distribute the 5, 5x minus 30. Now again, we have to simplify the side. So we definitely don't want to leave any like terms lingering on the same side, okay? Once we have nothing else to combine on each side, we're ready to kind of cross the equal sign now and start doing our inverse operation. So I'm going to, you know, subtract 4x from here to appease some of you that don't like negative numbers, right? So you're going to get minus 4 equals x minus 30. I'm going to add 30 to both sides. And I'm going to cancel this out, and I'm going to get that x equals 26. So x is 26 is the solution. And once again, you can always double check yourself. If your number, if you're concerned it doesn't make sense, then do 4 times 26 plus 2 
minus 12 is supposed to equal 5 times 26 minus 6. So let's see if that works. 4 times 28, that's going to equal um, 6, 112 minus 12, and that's 100. And 5 times 20 is also 100. So notice that the left equals the right. So when I checked it, it worked. So again, always, you know, just double check yourself. If your numbers feel weird or you're not real confident that they're working out, you can always check and make sure that your numbers make sense. Um, okay, so then we keep going and we follow the same processes over and over and over again. So again, I'm going to distribute the 3. I get 6x minus 12 equals 7. Now this is minus x minus 5. So kind of think of this as if it was a negative 1 and distribute it. So minus x minus 5. So 6x minus 12, and I'm going to combine my like terms here. I got minus x and 7 minus 5 is 2. Okay, so now I'm going to add x to both sides. And I'm going to get 7x minus 12 equals 2. And then I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And I'm going to get... 7x equals 14, and when I divide by 7, I'm going to get that x equals 2 over 1 or 2. And that's my answer. Uh, I keep going. Again here, I'm going to use the distributive property here, and I'm going to distribute the 4. So 4 times negative 2x is minus 8x. 4 times 1 is 4. Here it's 6, and remember this is like a minus 1, so I'm going to distribute it, minus 2x, and a plus 4. Again, I'm going to combine my like terms before I start to do my inverse operations. So my 6 and my 4 combine. At this point, maybe I'll add 2x to both sides, and that's going to leave me with 6, negative 6x plus 4 equals 10. And I'm going to subtract 4 from each side, and I get negative 6x equals 6. And when I divide by negative 6, I get x equals negative 1. And that's my answer. And so now we get to sum with fractions and stuff. And again, this is just where our number sense and how good you are with fractions. And um, it helps you here. Let me erase a little bit. Um, so here what we're going to do is this. Um, Initially, your instinct might be to distribute the one-fifth, okay? But because these two numbers don't have five as a factor, right, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up with fractions. You're going to end up with 2x over 5. Uh, the second one, the fraction will cancel. It'll be 1. And then you're going to get x plus 2 over 3. And again, you're going to get this problem with fractions where it's going to be a little bit of a complication. And so one of the strategies that we use is we eliminate fractions. And then when you get into higher math, you want to get rid of fractions as soon as you can. And so what we try to do is we try to find a number that we can multiply each um, you know, group on each side by that number that would eliminate that fraction. And by what we're really looking for is we're looking for like the least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators. Notice here you have a denominator of 5. Here you have a denominator of 3. And so you want to find the LCD or the LCM. So what I do is I take the bigger number, 5, and I just start finding multiples of 5. So 5, 10. 3 does not go into 10. 15. 3 goes into 15. So 15 is going to be the number that I'm going to multiply both of these sets by. So when I multiply this by 5, this becomes 3. So now this becomes 3 times 1 times 2x plus 5. And then the other side, this 3 cancels. This becomes a 5. And this side becomes 5 times x plus 2. Okay? And so now notice that you're going to end up 3 times 1 is 3. And you're going to distribute the 3. So you're going to get 6x plus 15 equals 5x plus 10. And now it's a simple math problem. You know, you just combine your variables on one side. You get x plus 15 equals 10. You subtract 15 from both sides. And you get x equals minus 5. And there's your answer. 
and it made life a lot easier to eliminate that fraction from the very beginning. So again here, notice number 13. That's a lot of fractions. However, if you can multiply every single term by some number, um, that's a least common multiple of all of them, you're gonna eliminate every single variable there. Not variable, every single denominator. So let's look at the numbers. We've got two, three, four, and three. So start with the bigger number and say, okay, well, the multiples of four are four. Well, none of the, not all the numbers go into four. Then there's eight. Not all the numbers go into eight. Then there's 12. And you're like, okay, all the numbers go into 12. So basically you're like multiplying 12 by this, this term, this term, this term, and this term. Every single term gets multiplied by the 12, okay? So what we're doing is we're gonna do um, 12 times this whole thing. Well, the three's gonna cancel, the 12's gonna become a four, and so that's gonna be four times two x plus four, whatever the numerator is. Then we repeat. We're like, okay, we're gonna do 12 times a half x. So the two's gonna cancel, the 12's gonna become a six, and we're gonna get plus six times one x. Then we go to the next one, one fourth, and we're gonna do times 12. So the 12's gonna become a three in that case, and we're gonna get three times one x. And then minus, and again, this is back to being a 12, 3 and 12, this becomes a 4, and we're like minus 7 times 4. And so I, in every single one, my denom because I picked at least common multiple, my denominator canceled out all four times. So now I'm ready to just solve with numbers, not fractions, right? Um, so I've got 8x plus 16 plus 6x equals 3x minus 28. So I'll combine my like terms over here. I get 14x plus 16 equals 3x minus 28. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. So I get 11x plus 16 equals minus 28. I'm gonna subtract 16 from both sides. I'm gonna get 11x equals negative 44. And when I divide both sides by 11, I'm gonna get x equals negative 4. And so that's the answer to this problem. Whoops. And so it, it, you know, again, you could have solved it the long way and you would have, you know, converted all these fractions to a fraction with a denominator of 12 and you would have, you would have done a lot of work. Um, but it, you know, if you can get used to this method of multiplying everything by this least common denominator, you're gonna find, or least common multiple, you're gonna find it very helpful. Um, utilizing that same strategy, I'm going to do number 14. Now here, notice I have a denominator of 3, and then I have this decimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 0.25 to a decimal. Now a lot of you know that it's a quarter, but just in case you don't, 0.25 is equal to 25 over 100, and when I simplify that, it becomes 1 fourth. So what I'm going to do here whoops, is that this is going to become one-fourth x, okay? Um, it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Let me just kind of fix that. One-fourth x, okay? Or don't even, I'm not even going to say x. I'm just going to say one-fourth and the x is already there in black, right? So now I'm going to find a least common multiple of the denominators, which are three and four. And again, it's going to be 12, okay? So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. So I'm going to multiply the two-thirds x, the quarter x, the x, and the two. So when I do two thirds x times 12, I know the three is gonna cancel and it's gonna leave me with a four. So I'm gonna get four times two x, okay? When I do, um, I'm gonna go back to the 12, 12 times a quarter x, the four cancels and the 12 is gonna become a three. So it's gonna be plus three times one x, okay? When I do this one, 12 times x is just 12x, and here it's just gonna be two times 12 is 24. And so that's the expanded out version, right? So I'm just gonna keep you know, trying to solve here. I'm just gonna kind of erase a little bit, right? 
You've got that written down. So I'm going to start 4 times 2x is 8x plus 3 times 1x is 3x equals 12x plus 24. So 11x equals 12x plus 24. I'll subtract 12x from both sides and I get minus x equals 24, which means x is negative 24. And so there's the answer to that one. And on this last one, you notice there is not a fraction, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do have to clean up this parentheses and this grouping thing before I ever even get into that 4 or anything else. So when I go to do this problem, I'm just going to take it easy, and I'm going to focus on one thing at a time. Now I see this in here, this minus 3 minus x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this minus 1 here. So it's going to be minus 3 plus 1x, and then I have the plus 5 at the end. Okay, everything else is going to stay the same. Now I'm going to combine my like terms within that bracket. Okay, so I've got 2x and 1x is 3x, and I have minus 3 and positive 5, which is plus 2. And then here I have minus 7x minus 2. So now that the inside is cleaned up and simplified and distributed and everything, now I'm ready to actually distribute the 4. So I'm going to get 12x plus 8 equals minus 7x minus 2. And at this point, it's just solving. So I'm going to add 7x to both sides. I'm going to get 19x plus 8 equals minus 2. I'll subtract 8 from both sides. I'll get 19x equals negative 10. And when I divide both sides by 19, I'm going to get that x equals negative 10 over 19. Weird number, but it is the solution. And now we come to our last slide, and notice that we've had a solution for everything. So this last slide is where we're going to focus on those special products and kind of like how to recognize them and understand them. So again, they don't start out that obvious most of the time. They start out like any other problem, and you start your process, you distribute, you know, you do all your math here, you combine your like terms on a side, you end up x minus 8 equals x minus 8. And then all of a sudden, you're going to realize, wow, my left side is exactly identical to the right side. And even if you don't notice it there, okay, if you were to keep going and you were to say, okay, let's do minus x and minus x, and you're like, oh, I got minus 8 equals minus 8. Well, these are still equal as well. So at some point, you're going to stop and realize, okay, wait, the left side is completely equal to the right side. And what this means is my solutions are all real numbers here. Okay, because this is a true statement, this is a true statement, and anytime you get this true statement where the left side always equals the right side, they're exactly identical, what it means is it doesn't matter what answer x is. x is all numbers because, for example, if I just go back up here to x minus 8 equals x minus 8, think about possible values that I can put here. So 2x kind of erased everything, right? So I had um, x minus 8 equals x minus 8. Well, if x is 0, 0 minus 8 equals 0 minus 8. Negative 8 equals negative 8. If x is 100, well, 100 minus 8 is equal to 100 minus 8. 92 equals 92. See, it doesn't matter what I plug in for x. Every number works. And therefore, the solutions are every number so we call that all real numbers. We also can refer to it as infinite numbers, okay? Everything works here. Every value for x is a solution. So we go to 17. Let's see if that's the same scenario. Again, we start out like normal. We distribute. We don't know if anything special is happening here. And so we're like, well, this is kind of weird. The left side doesn't really equal the right side. In fact, it's kind of strange because here it says that 9x minus 3 is going to be the same value as 9x plus 3. So when is something minus 3 equal to something plus 7? It's never going to equal that. But again, it might not be so obvious to you yet. So we say, okay, well, let's 
combine our, our variables. Let's subtract 9x from this side. And so all of a sudden, you're like, okay, wait, minus 3 equals 7. Well, is this a true statement? Does negative 3 equal 7? No, this is a false statement. So when you get to this false statement, whether you recognize it here that it's false or whether you recognize it here, what this means is that there's no solution or no real solution to this problem, okay? So this is a no solution. And sometimes we say that, okay? So those are the two kinds of weird solutions that you're, you're not going to get an x equals 10 or an x equals 0 or an x equals 5. You're going to get weirdness. And those are your special ones. So again, let's go to the next one and try to do that one and see if it's which special solution it is. And we do, um, we're going to distribute first. So we get minus 12x minus 6. And then here I'm going to distribute this minus 3. So it's going to be minus 3x plus 12 equals negative 15x plus 1. Again, combine my like terms. I get minus 15x plus 6 equals minus 15x plus 1. And yet again, notice that minus 15x and minus 15x have the exact same value. So there's no way that I can add 6 to it and subtract or add 1 to it and it's going to be equal. This is a false statement. And even if I just cancel those out, 6 does not equal 1, right? So this is false. Um, it's a false statement. And so this is a no solution again, okay? And then the last one. Um, now, the last one, you see this fraction. And you might say, well, hey, well, I'm going to multiply everything by 2 here. But I do want you to notice that this is the only fraction here, okay, this half. And notice that 6 and 14 are both divisible by 2. So what's going to happen is the 2 is going to cancel out both times. You're not going to end up with a fraction if you multiply by it. So it's not worth really multiplying everything by 2 to kind of get rid of it. Okay, so what's going to happen here is half of 6x is 3x, because that becomes a 3 like that. And half of 14 is going to be 7. So when you multiply by half, you get rid of the fraction anyway. And then here you've got x plus 1 plus this, okay? So this is going to be, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming this is this, okay? So it's going to be plus 2x plus 6. So again, we take the left side, we leave it like that. We take the right side and we combine our like terms. We've got 3x plus 7. So 3x plus 7 equals 3x plus 7. These are exactly the same. So already here we know that this is an all real solutions is one way to say it, or infinity. Basically, everything works. So when you have this scenario and this one, all values that you can think of, fractions, decimals, whole numbers, integers, positives, negatives, they all work. Every number works. When you have these no numbers work. There are no x values or variable values that are ever going to give you those solutions. So they are really opposite types of things. One is everything and one is nothing. So again, recognize the differences and that's it.